Hey there guys, it's Chaos back again. Um, this is going to be my video on the skills breakdown for the new build that I'm working on. Before I get to it however, um, since the release of the build on Reddit, there has been some controversy over the name of the build. I have no qualms with changing the name. A lot of people felt that, you know, Atom Bomb wasn't a fitting name for the build for the playstyle. And you know what? not a problem I mean it's not set in concrete and like I said there was a couple names I want to throw out there anyways but that could be you know worked on later the important part and the information I want to bring on this video however is going to be of course the skills combinations and why things are where they are um, I gotten a lot of feedback of course about well why don't you put this skill in for that one and those skills usually are the more popular more talked about understood um, skills and I'll, I'll tell you why so we'll start off by looking at the skill sheet um, of course this build is going to center around seismic slam if you guys haven't watched the video of it in action um, look at the introduction video I'll put a link in the um, the annotation here um, so you could go ahead and see how the build plays out when I first did that video however uh, much has changed play style as far as synergies between skills I've learned a little bit better to control my fury and use the seismic slam um, on the correct times and also how to gain extra fury from doing things like maybe touching play while I'm fighting the elite uh, to maybe getting shot on purpose by a range mob to get um, you know more fury but we'll get more into that on maybe another video like when I do my bulldozer barbs for playing tips um, I'm gonna try to concentrate as much as possible on the skills right now so um, with seismic slam you're looking at a skill which has I think the largest AOE um, contact patch of any barbarian skill um, it's comparable to charge but on a wider radius um, or wider arc at the end of its cast if you guys haven't played with seismic slam before the way that this works is you cast kinda like an upside down triangle from the point of origin out 45 yards um, it's a pretty wide spread so the one nice thing about this skill is you no longer have to aim carefully to make a successful hit. Um, it will kind of seek out targets in a very wide arc as a very long um, and reaching AOE effect and the damage they've actually boosted in 1.0.4 so this is kind of um, aiming toward it, you know trying to get people to use a skill when I first started playing a barb I wanted to do something with seismic slam but, but the weapons and you know the skills damage the fury cost none of it actually made sense I only had a short stint where I was overpowered in Act 1 Inferno when I um, was making my way through there initially that with 30k DPS it, it, you know, it made sure work with a lot of mobs even at uh, pre 1.0.2 era. Um, but today because mobs have less HP as, as, as far as elites go and white mobs do less damage it's safer to use a skill like this because now you can forego some defense with a two hander and make it work. Um, speaking of two-handers, uh, we'll get more in depth with the gearing in another video as well. But I just want to say this build is going to be two-hand centric. What that means is I don't recommend a you know um, sword and board build. I don't recommend a dual wield because what you get there is you, in, in place of um, damage per cast, you're getting faster attack speeds or more safety. Both of which loses you DPS per cast. Um, two-handers have an outrageous boost since 1.0.4 and you will definitely get more damage per cast which is the important factor to to note in this build because you need generators to feed you fury and your fury is going to be limited to the cooldown of these generators so you can't just spam this endlessly and not have to worry about generation in this build um, if you had you know basically an unlimited supply of fury then the attack speed will make up for the deficit but because now you're doing bigger hits uh, less often you're gonna get the same amount of DPS but you can work with this build because the cooldowns will match the time frames so um, going back to the skill 240 percent weapon damage is one of the biggest AOE skills that the bar will have as well and of course people have asked how about you know hammer the ancient hammer the ancient doesn't work well with two-handed barbs because you're gonna be really up close and personal um, I think Hammer of the Ancient works better with more of a tanky build because you have the survivability and the extra damage on their runes will make up for the damage that you lose from not having a two-hander. So it's more of a gimme um, and you know a takeaway depending on how you view the skills themselves. Um, for people that want to use Hammer of the Ancients with a two-hander, just make sure you are invulnerable just from purely gear itself. 
because if not, the closing distance for Hammer of the Ancients is a lot closer. You have to be, you know, um, face tanking. Sometimes to put a good few hits in, especially if they're kiters, you're going to have to chase things and molt in to make it work. Um, seismic Slam, you can be 45 yards out and still hit things. So I highly recommend Seismic Slam over any of the other spenders in this particular build. Um, so I chose Strength from Earth as the rune, and we'll take a look quickly at the different runes that um, Seismic Slam will give you as well. Now Stagger is one of the, I would say, better utility um, runes that you get with Seismic Slam. It gives you 70% chance to stun enemies, which is great. Uh, you know, stun enemies can't do anything to you. You can interrupt attacks with stun, and 70% is a pretty high chance. But they have one common flaw, and we'll get to that, and I'm just going to move quickly through these runes here. So increased damage for um, Shattered Ground. Shattered Ground was the rune that I ran with when I was initially in Act 1 with 30k DPS. And um, the reason for that is because I'd use Earthquake. And Shattered Ground is the only rune that I found that you can actually knock back elites and, cha uh, well, not champions, but the elites. So you can go ahead and um, basically, you know, push blue mobs back into Earthquake, which I was using at the time, and keep a distance safe enough where I'm not getting hit. Um, because I went pretty glass cannon then too. And the extra damage does help a little bit, but, you know, 40% damage in a skill um, where you get spam endlessly is not a huge deal because there's maybe one more slam versus two. Um, so we'll go ahead and go to the next one. Rumble is a pretty interesting one. Now, um, when I first posted about the build, of course, other people have asked, well, why don't you synergize this with Into the Fray like everybody else is doing whenever you need Fury? And into the fray doesn't really work when you have a low proc rate. What that means is if you have skills that generate very little amount of hits, um, not only do they not synergize while, uh, well with into the fray, they don't synergize well with life on hit. Um, that's why this build, when we get to gear, and we're going to talk more about, but it's um, also centered around life steal versus life on hit. Um, because damage is the key here. So with Rumble, um, if you were to plan on going with Into the Fray, this would probably be the rune that you'd like to choose. I actually tried it. Um, the results were underwhelming. They don't crit enough to generate um, enough Fury, and it can't be self-sufficient. Even though that you know you get two seconds worth of AOE pops that would do 60% damage, much like um, tornadoes will for a run like the wind. The only difference is with run like the wind, you hit five times a second, dealing the same 60% over five hits. More procs um, into the into the fray ruin for battle rage. Um, I think I've heard um, from you know other people that maybe they've did a secret nerf and this and that. Um, I haven't really played enough world one to find out. But uh, from their sources or their gameplay experience, they're saying that now Battle Rage um, into the fray is only taking the first crit of Tornadoes into account. So you're looking at a slower generation pace, which is going to be on par with Rumble if you ran it that way. The only problem with Rumble is the arc of um, Seismic Slam would generate randomly where those arcs or where those um, pops will come up from. So it's not the entire arc giving you 60% damage over two seconds is random spots in that arc. Um, in this build, I once again has the same common flaw as everything else and we'll go into um, Cracking Rift. Cracking Rift is going to go ahead and narrow your shot to 340% damage, 42 yard damage path. I'm going to run through this really quick. Damage wise, this is not the best um, skill and I'll tell you why. All of these guys here have one common flaw is that they use 30 Fury. 30 Fury is very power hungry. It is good as a once in a while skill, um, but you can't use Seismic Slam as that skill because if you use it every once in a while, I mean, it either kills things or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, you're in trouble because you just spent all your Fury. You only get 100 as a barb by default. That's a third, almost a third um, of your Fury spent in one single cast. So yes, you might stun them for about 1.5 seconds. It'll probably take you the same amount of time to generate that back um, you know, just to get another slam out there. And at the same time, other things could be hitting you. Um, so 30 per cast on all of these guys here um, take away from the benefits that you get. So if you look at, you know, the last rune, Cracking Rift, 340% for 30 Fury. If you look at Strength from Murph, you'll quickly see why I tend to go with this one because um, not only is it going to cost you 15 Fury for a 240% attack, but you don't have to have it in a narrow line like Charge. 
this will cover a lot larger of an area it's better for AOE damage um, you hit more things at once on top of which if you spend the same 30 fury you're doing 480 percent damage that's the big key now second thing and the reason why this is better seismic slam has a very long wind-up animation if you guys haven't used it before try it you'll see that you know it's a very slow animation if you're doubling that with the hammer um, something slow it's gonna be even worse so to rectify that you will miss once in a while and misclick and if you misclick with any one of these guys with 30 fury you could kiss yourself goodbye because if you're relying on this to kill things and you just missed you basically have no answer for whatever is coming at you so Strength from Earth is, I think, the strongest um, rune that Seismic Slam has. Um, in my opinion, I think most of these guys um, can either get reworked one way or another, but this is going to be for another video. Um, but in this build, I highly recommend you not stray from Strength, uh, strength from Earth. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and maybe vary from it and start some discussion, I'm more than, you know, game to entertain you for, you know, the discussion between these. And if you guys had success with any of these that, you know, you found out something I don't, please share it. Because uh, if we could build variants to make the build even better, I'm more for it. Um, so we'll go out of here and go to the second skill. Ancient Spear is one where a lot of people might not be familiar with. In fact, when I first played the game, um, in the first run through, I never touched the skill. When I earned it, never even put it on my skill bar. Um, the first time I used it was in Inferno, when I got like three shot at by anything that came up to me moving. Um, with Ancient Spear, I played my first range barb with it, and um, there were other people that complained recently about how it doesn't fit into those builds because it pulls things to you while you're trying to kite. Um, they're all valid points, um, and you know it gets very little use from a lot of people because as a single target, you get way more single target skills that do better damage because this guy here does 185 weapon damage, and. The one thing that is nice about the Ancient Spear now that they fix is you can use it as an auto attack when the cooldown is generating. Before that wasn't the case and that was a big problem if you basically put this on like say a left click, right click, um, once it's done you can't attack anything. Um, that change is actually huge for 1.0.4 and it plays a little bit into this um, particular build and we'll cover that a little later when I talk about synergies. Um, but right now dealing with just the rune itself it's a generator it generates 15 fury and if you remember that number that's exactly what seismic slam costs per cast so if you shoot something adamant inanimate, adamant, um, you can go ahead and gain enough fury to cast a seismic slam that is huge that's the reason why this is here the other reason for is because you have many different um, runes to choose from grappling hook sounds pretty cool if you wanted something you know tighter uh, packed you could grab three things at once and slam them all in front of you making it easier for you to aim sounds great on paper um, not the best room for this build and I'll explain why later skirmish as well increase for gain to 30 now you might think doubling it would make a lot of sense too so you could get two slams for every one um, cast of ancient spear well my playthrough results is if you play smart enough um, you will avoid starvation of fury but it might happen it will still happen I'm not gonna lie um, if you you know play multiplayer especially um, you might find that mobs have more life than you do cooldown so you will run out of fury every once in a while this is maybe not a bad skill depending on your gear and we'll cover that as well um, but I, I would second this as maybe an alternate Harpoon. Um, Harpoon does kind of the same thing as grappling hooks but in a different manner. Um, it basically pulls multiple enemies in a straight line so it's a different skill than grappling hook um, but the same weakness so we'll explain that later as well. And Rage Flip. Rage Flip is rather interesting. It gives you a DPS boost um, but in my opinion as you guys know when I make builds I center around one skill spam that skill as much as possible that's going to be your main damage dealer anything else added to it you do not need extra damage it's there for utility um, so rage flip has a utility where it pulls enemies in the opposite direction where the damage is dealt so explain that in layman's terms if you haven't used it before if you shoot a mob right in front of you in melee range it's going to go ahead and throw them behind you um, in I believe the max range that ancient spear can reach um, I don't think um, dispersing mobs is the best idea in this build. Uh, when you're regularly kiting with this build, you want to make sure that everything's in front of you. Standard, you know, kiter um, style there. Just make sure nothing gets behind you. You have a safe path to kite to. Um, with this build, because you kill so fast, you don't have to do so much kiting, but it's still going to be a necessary thing. 
So Rage Flip works against you in every which way and there's been many complaints about the skill where it does absolutely, I would say the worst thing for range barbs is that you're putting them into kiting area and I feel that because this build is sort of like that, it's not going to be the best thing to do. So now we go to Dread Spear and the one that I did pick. So I picked the um, rune that gives you 60% damage dealt inflicted, um, you know, basically to be life uh, gain, so it's a heal. And the reason why this is significant is because look at the cooldown, it's 10 seconds. Um, when I was playing range barb, that was a very long time because it's 10 seconds without an auto attack. But because now when you throw the weapon, um, you can actually right click on things and it will actually do an auto attack. Um, so, you know, it's your base attack, 100% damage, 1.0 coefficient. Um, it, it's a pretty decent attack. I still get crits up to like about 180 um, if it lands, maybe 120, 140 a lot of times. Um, but if you think about it now, when this hits on the regular, say 185% weapon damage on the spear, I could crit up to about 300k. With 60% of that damage, I literally instant heal, um, and it will be an instant heal for a lot of health pulls out there, unless you're like in 80k full tank mode. So having a potential full heal every 10 seconds alleviates you from having to have a large buffer of hit points. You can, if, so long as you can survive, you know, enough for 10 seconds, you could reset the fight um, every so often. And there's other skills that help you with that. Um, but I chose this one because it gives you staying power and when I first started this build uh, my gear was underwhelming and I had about 26k life. I didn't choose to run it with 26k life, it's just what I had. Um, but in practice you want more and my new gear, and I'll show that in the next video, will have more and I I'm starting to get gear where it's going to finalize the build and of course I'm also going to try to make a minimum run um, to make sure that you know, people that are looking to en enter this is not going to have to break their bank to basically get into this build. So going back to skirmish, um, the fury gain is great, but because you lose the um, instant heal to full, um, this kind of replaced charge dreadnought for me, and it's a safer format. And the reason why that is is because you no longer put yourself in danger with charge, um, because you know furious charge has dreadnought which heals for a lot, but if your life pool is small, it heals for very little. But this is not based on life at all. If you have a very small pool of life, but heavy damage, you actually heal everything. So you can look at it as a 100% heal if you crit. Even if you don't, depending on your damage, you can heal a big you know, a portion of it um, to withstand a few more hits. So if you go with this, make sure that your gear gives you enough either regen or something that you can bypass needing Dread Spear. But Dread Spear gives you so much staying power. It's one of my favorite skills right now for a barb. I just discovered it. Love it the heck. Um, now the other big thing about Ancient Spear by default is it pulls goblins because this build is lacking in any mobility like um, you know sprint this pulling goblins back helps you 9 out of 10 times to kill it quicker and the crits are large enough itself on a single target where you could kill it with the spear so this is a very good skill to have you could pull mobs away from um, molten effects and things like that they're leaving if they're kiting you so instead of fighting them on their grounds, you pull them back where you're safe, pull them away from their arcanes, pull them in near you, and then do whatever you wish to do after that. Um, and because every time you hit something with it, you get the fury, next thing you probably want to do is seismic slam. So we'll go to the next skill. Ground stomp. I don't know really how many people like to use ground stomp, but um, in my initial thread, I did the research, and the top 500 hero score, of course, is going to be whirlwind um, biased. Um, ground Stomp didn't make the cut for a lot of these players, it was hovering about 6%. Um, however, I know there's a lot of people out there that still use it because it's a very good CC. Um, Wrenching Smash is one of my favorite runes and I've chosen this, but we'll go ahead and once again break down all these and why I chose Wrenching Smash. Um, so Ground Stomp here with Deafening Crash, enemies in an area have their movements slowed for 3 seconds after you know they recover from being stunned. This is pretty good for... I would say prolong control of a mob. Um, the only problem is with all of these guys here, just like um, Seismic Slam, is by default they all have a 12 yard radius. So no matter how good the text is in the ruin, it does not compare to Wrenching Smash because you have a 24 yard radius. And I'll come to explain that um, after I go ahead and uh, you know read the rest of these guys here. You could probably do that on your own, but um, for the sake of doing it, 
I'm gonna just go finish it here. Enemies in the area also take 70% weapon damage. Once again, if you look at my builds, you know that I center my builds on one skill. That skill is gonna be very heavy damage. It's gonna be um, something that you could spam. So there's no need for any extra damage because you're usually gonna be using that skill to kill everything anyways. So having extra damage, not a necessity. I'd rather get more utility because that's what every single one of these skills are here for. Um, terrible choice if you're going with this build. Incre uh, increase fury gain just like dread spear um, you could spare this if you feel that your gameplay is well enough um, if your skill as a player is well enough to overcome you know any utility needed from ground stomp this is kind of like a utilities version of say bash with extra damage or cleave with extra damage uh, if your skill is good enough that you don't need any of the extra cc's or anything like that you know this is a good alternate and it's the only other one that I personally would think about um, and an avalanche um, anything knockback, um, aside from Seismic Slam itself, and by the way, Seismic Slam's knockback only pertains to white mobs, unless you pick um, one of the runes that allows you to do elites, like I said earlier. Um, this guy here, much the same. Um, this build doesn't benefit from dispersing mobs. It benefits from collecting mobs into a tighter circle or tighter group. Um, and that's where Wrenching Smash comes in. So it's the total opposite of Avalanche, kind of except for one thing is it increases the distance to 24 yards now I played Monk as well and Cyclone same thing the increased distance helps everything um, and it's basically not just to collect more mobs but if you think of it this way this is a kiting build do you want to walk within 12 yards of something just to activate this so you can stun something important or use it to generate fury because you see here is 15 fury generated so if you need you know 15 fury didn't do another slam do you really want to walk up next to somebody to stomp them with this build here um, with this ruin you can actually stomp them from a way longer distance so even if your aim is not to control the entire mob that's on your ass you can use this to stomp one dude way out in the open gain enough fury stay in kiting distance and then use seismic slam to finish everybody off so you could use this I will sort of say as a it's an offensive crowd control um, most of the other ones are defensive and in this build because you know you're gonna be spamming the heck out of seismic slam it's gonna be fury hungry you're gonna be forced to use some skills not at the most optimum times but by increasing the range it gives you abilities to overcome um, you know the the distance danger that you get with it same thing with like hammer the ancient you don't want to be close especially with two hand because you're taking full blunts of damage with no block um, and other things with this skill too is pretty neat um, if you guys have you know not used this enough, you notice that on my full set of skills, there's no Wrath of the Berserker. And Wrath of the Berserker is popular for two reasons. One is for extra damage, second is for the crowd control. Crowd control is my reason to use it in any build if I were to put it in there. Once again, I usually make sure my main attack and secondary attack is enough damage wise to deal with what I'm dealing with. If it's not, there's a big flaw with that and you can't rely on Wrath of the Berserker to be your killing blow. If you do, you're going to be hindering your kill speed, you're going to be hindering your farm speed, and also progression. Um, so without Wrath of the Berserker, how do I deal with things like, you know, CCs in general? I only have one skill here, we'll get to that later, is Leap, um, to deal with some of these um, crowd control effects. But if you play Ground Stomp right, you can actually use this defensively to take care of those issues too. So just an instance here, um, if you fight a Jailer Face Beast mob, they are going to be on your ass there's nothing you can do about it and once they teleport they surround you they're going to get a full surround they're going to go ahead and slap the hell out of you now what you can do is save ground stop in those situations because you know it's coming stomp them right when they get right before they swing and you're going to interrupt them along with buying you time to cool down all your skills along with getting out of jail um, so it buys you time to get out of that event um, the other thing you can do is if you were to get hit by something huge, um, like say Shatterbones attack, you know, those big giant swings of maces, you could use this to interrupt. Stun even works on bosses, every single boss, I believe. Um, there's a few animations like say Skeleton King's um, giant swing, you can't stun those. You can't stun Diablo out of the cage grabs. Um, but for 99% of all skills in this game, you can interrupt their animation. So it saves you or a buddy's ass um, if you guys get in a little bit of a hot trouble. Um, the other thing you can do too is if you get walled in and things like that and you know you are stuck within a triangle wall and your leap is on cooldown you can stomp them to make sure that the walls either you know by time they, just like Jailer to go down and you could freely walk away or generate the fury so you can go ahead and once you break free slam the heck out of them 
Um, so you could use this defensively to take care of a lot of different things. Um, and let's say even in the worst case scenario, you know you're going to get frozen. Well, stomp them to give them two seconds less because um, you see that stun for ground stomp is about four seconds. If you're fighting elite, it usually I think cuts it in half. Um, so you get two seconds of time basically to whittle down the frozen. Um, frozen usually will kill you. Um, that's still the worst thing possible to fight against with any of these builds because we are so dependent on Wrath of Berserker to take care of Frozen. I mean, of course, any mobility to get out of the way. Um, but Retching Smash could help those situations. So be a little bit smarter of a player with Ground Stomp. Don't spam it. Um, if you know you're going to be fighting crowd control, this is going to save you a lot of times if you play it correctly and use it for defensive purposes. Um, so we'll go on to the next skill, Ignore Pain. Uh, and you guys know that you know I like overpower a lot. My build has now evolved into 50% crit, and that synergy with overpower is huge. The problem with overpower, since I've ran it, is um, I like the extra damage on there. But once again, you know, like my rule is, you don't need the extra damage. Um, I don't want to use a skill to kill something because if I use it to kill something. I won't have it when I need it for defensive purposes. So having that skill there kind of made me torn um, between you know using it defensively, uh, offensively, and even though I could get it back really quickly, it just once in a while it's not there when I need it. Not only that, even though at 35% with the increased mitigation from crushing advance, it's still 30% less than ignore pain. And of course, the cooldown is what keeps it better. The only problem is is over a long attrition fight, um, overpower would be better, but if you are taking in flash damage and you could get killed in an instant, ignore pain is better. And when you're using a two-hander, um, you know, once again, phase beast is the thing that's constantly hitting me, and I'll use them as an example a lot, is ignore pain is going to be a better choice here. And once again, we'll go into these, and I don't really have to explain too much because ignore pain a lot of people are used to. Um, so once again, knockback, uh, I don't even have to read the whole thing. You don't want to disperse mobs. You want to keep them in a tight pack. Don't use knockback here. Um, Ironhide, this is the one that I've chosen. I like the extra two seconds. Two seconds in Diablo, especially when your whole skill bar is filled with 10 to 12 second cooldowns, is a long time. Um, it buys you a full reset on some skills for the full duration of seven seconds if you cast things before it. Um, I, I think this is the reason why I gone with this choice here. However, this Ignorance is Bliss is another popular one that gets talked about a lot. 20% life steal um, from damage dealt. This is just like Dread Spear, and you might think, well, why don't you use this? Because wouldn't this give you full health? It will. Um, the only thing is because Ignore Pain is such a great, um, I would say, mitigation tool that your heals normally, and you know, even from 3 to 6%, depending on the weapon that you're choosing and the belt combinations, and maybe if you're daring passives. Um, you could heal more than enough just by the 3% under the influence of Ignore Paint. So having the additional 20, which is not debuffed by the way on Inferno, it's overkill. And if it's overkill, I mean, Ignore Paint is just there for you not to get killed. Because you got to remember, if I popped Ignore pain and I needed the life anyways, I'll just wait until Dread Spear is off a of cooldown, crit with that, and then get my life back anyways. So, you know, this would be doubly good. Um, the only problem with this is overkill. So getting two extra seconds instead of a redundant heal, um, in my opinion, works better. So mob rule. Um, if you're playing a, a you know multiplayer game, and I usually do that, this is one alternate that I would say is a good choice um, because everybody loves a helpful partner. Um, and, you know, if you're playing with a monk, man, a cyclone build with this is gobs of fun. I've met a couple of guys from Reddit and then from their friends, you know, we became friends and we started playing together. And every time they're on, I mean, it's party time because they cyclone everything for me. I don't have to use my stomps as often. I could save it for pure defensive purposes. And if I could return the favor, you know, every once in a while, when I get good enough with the build, I might switch over to mob rule when I'm playing multiplayer just to go ahead and, you know, um, send the love out. Because a 30 second cooldown is the biggest disadvantage with ignore pain. But with this build, because you're kiting and because you don't have sprint to run from mob to mob, 30 seconds is a blink of an eye, is the same time frame as Warcry. So, I mean, you, you learn to cope with the cooldown. But this is a very good rune if you're playing multiplayer. Because um, if a monk stays alive, you do too. That's the general rule of thumb there. 
Um, basically, with this one here on the end, contemporary weakness, uh, reflect 50% damage. You guys already know, um, no extra damage needed in any of these utility skills. Utility first. And this one here is the best utility of the lot. If you're single player, multiplayer, this would be a good choice. So that explains that. And um, of course, utility and how you use this. Every time you're going to die, pop it. It's your old crap button. Um, you know, if you feel that you're going to be in for a long fight, if you're going to be, you know, getting vortex inside of like demon or demonic tremor mobs, um, face beast is going to be all over you. I usually just proc this in any sign of face beast because they do hurt a lot. Um, so generally speaking, you know, there's no real trick to using this. Just use it when you need it. Save it when you don't. This is not something I proc all the time. And if I do, there's no benefits outside of just staying alive. So if you don't need it, don't proc it. You're wasting it. Leap. Okay. So with leap, of course, this is going to be my main um, anti-CC skill. So if you get jailed, this is the one thing that 1.0.4 has changed is leap now breaks jailer effects. You could actually leap away while you're jailed. So you could, you know, leap away from Desecrator that they like to do combos with so much. You could leap away while they're jailing you, um, getting ready to prep for a frozen orb to explode under you. You could um, leap away from walls. You could leap away from a full surround. You could leap away from just about everything. Um, so if you fight any of those mobs and you notice that that's what they pack, save leap and save ground stomp. Use ancient spear and use war cry to spam for your fury. Use the auto attacks to get fury back if you have to. When you're in a safe distance, then you could gauge if it's you know good to generate the fury using these skills um so leap also gives you 15 fury 10 second cooldown 10 second cooldowns in this build is um i wouldn't say long it ain't short either i think if it was down maybe another second or two you could run endlessly with this build but you know i think the balance is good um if you use up too much fury you kind of in the old crap moment you can't really do much and i think it balances out with the pure destruction that seismic slam has to offer so like all the other skills, let's take a look at the ruins. Um, leap is a pretty popular skill. Even the um, initial whirlwind builds use leap to get away from some stuff, but not necessary. Um, so iron impacts what I picked. Everybody knows, you know, what this is from from a lot of the earlier uh, 1.0.2 barbs and so forth. 300% additional armor for four seconds. It's good for an offense and defensive tool. I've explained this prior in my bulldozer build, but you can leap in with extra armor, you can leap out with extra armor. So you can't die leaping in as an offensive tool. You can't die leaping out with the defensive tool. So even if people are shooting you, all they're doing is building you fury. Um, you could use launch. Launch is more of a getaway tool. It has no purpose whatsoever for offensive. So the lack of utility both ways really makes it hard for me to ever recommend this. Not only that, but 8 yards radius is very small. Um, so that's the other thing with all of these runes, like um, Seismic Slam and um, you know the the radius um, with Stomp. Eight yards is literally melee range. You have to be in touch distance to make this work. So things literally have to be hitting you before they would get snared, um, and that is a very small utility for something as useful as Leap. I never recommend Launch. They need to rework Launch like crazy. Um, to make it better and uh, a better choice for you know anything else the snare has to be really good to overcome four seconds You got to snare something four seconds. Look at this is three seconds on this for 60% slow You get four seconds of even if they could catch up to you. They can't really kill you So of course this is always gonna beat this so you know blizzard if you're listening uh, people if you guys agree spread the word uh, Launch not as good in my opinion now if you guys find that launch works in your situation You want to debate about it like I said I'm game post it and we'll talk about it and I enjoy those conversations a lot so toppling impact um, since enemies hurling away what does that mean knock back knock back I'm not approving of it for this build you want to keep things tight in a circle um, I just like I said not worth it in my opinion um, and it leaves you open if you're leaping out leaping in so it doesn't really make sense it only helps you in melee mobs range mobs they don't care you can just, you know just blast them back they'll, they'll shoot you um, call of the area shockwaves burst from the ground and you're pulling things in now this increased the radius which is cool you would think with retching smash this could be the other um you know grouper for you the only thing is when you leap in with this you're vulnerable again uh, without iron impact it is not a good offensive tool and what are you going to do when you're leaping for an escape and you're now drawing things closer to you 
Um, so once again, it's the opposite of what you want. I think in effect um, for leap as a utility item, if you don't have stomp and you have to have something to gather, then of course this will be okay. You can throw in maybe overpower instead of ground stomp, and that'll take care of the tanky issue. Um, so there's synergies you can make call of the area at work, just not with this build. So death from above. I've used this for quite some time. It's pretty decent. It's three seconds of 100% stun. Once again, the only problem is 8 yard radius. They have to be in touches distance. Um, the other thing too is for the elites, they don't get stunned that long. It's like I think half, one and a half seconds. It's good for an interrupt, but that's it. After the interrupt, you are as vulnerable as you were when you're farther away, but now they get to hit you. So, death from above, not my choice in this build here. For the white mobs, you get the full three seconds, but if you ever die to white mobs, you're under geared for your content. Don't do it. Um, so with Iron Impact, you know, it's pretty standard basic stuff. And of course, War Cry Impunity, I'm not going through this. Everybody should be running this. If they're not, then, you know, you're doing something wrong. So with passives, I gone and up my DPS as much as possible because this is a DPS based build. Now, um, with with Bulldozer Barb, um, when it was at its best, it was more of a defensive build. Um, so you can use skills to overcome gear weakness. And um, with this build, you use DPS to overcome defensive weakness. Um, so you give up some to gain some, and if you have both, more power to you, you're going to be way overpowered with this build. Um, if you don't have one or the other, choose defense over offense to sacrifice, because without DPS, this build doesn't work. Um, and DPS is hard to come by, but it is fun once you get it. So my two passives, I don't have to explain. You guys know why these are here. However, I do have to explain that if you use Weapon Master, in this build um, because crits help with higher damage is always going to get you better damage the way this passive is made is not going to be equal to attack speed nor increased damage use mason axis because that's what gives you crit chance that's all i have to say about that it's pretty self-explanatory ruthless um, if you guys have to sacrifice one of these for say more defense because you're finding yourself dying a lot flip flop these two because if you're using an axe and a mace depending on how your crit damage versus crit chance is built um, these guys here could interchange which one gives you more damage so make sure that you guys figure out which one's better for you if you gotta sacrifice one um, superstition is a staple for me and the same reason is if you use war cry impunity what are you using it for it's to make up for gear deficiencies or to give you extra mitigation superstition does the same thing it just doesn't block physical damage and physical being like archers, which are usually generally really weak. Um, physical like fallen dudes that will you know swing at you. Um, those guys you never really die to. The one things, of course, and I say this time and time again, the things you die to are things like Moloch shots, um, Occultist shots. You're dying to AOE like Molten, um, Arcane, things of that nature. Well, how good does a 20% flat out damage reduction sound? Not only that, but you gain fury for anything that's hitting you that's non-melee. Um, and elemental attacks. So if they're hitting you with melee attacks that are elemental, you're still getting fury. When you're fighting a plague mob, you could pop ignore pain stand in that particular um, spot and get unlimited fury to slam the hell out of things. If you guys haven't seen the video of how quickly you can kill things with unlimited slam, please do so because when you get that, it literally is going to cut the fight shorter than this cooldown, or not the cooldown, but the effect alone in seven seconds. Um, so superstition always a staple for me if you guys are not running it think of it this way if you're putting either nerves of steel or toughest nails in how much armor do you have to gain to equal to 20 percent mitigation from a moloch shot from an occultist shot from molten from desecrator from you know anything that deals elemental damage um succubus shots how much armor do you have to gain to to be equal to that and if you can't survive melee attacks that are physical, once again, you're probably under gear for your content. Um, I would not replace superstition with that. I would replace one of these. Now, if you want to venture out, and let's say you don't like to starve yourself um, with fury, switch out one of these guys. Animosity is a skill where I would say is a decent choice. Um, you could go ahead and get more maximum fury to get more storage. However, I don't think storage is an issue. You never get um, excess fury in this build very rarely are you ever running around with full fury but the extra 10 percent generation is the big key if you have to alternate one skill out you want something different you want to you know everybody likes to do variations um, this is one that i would say is a pretty good choice if you're going down that route 
just purely to synergize with getting more slams out there. So if you're using a two-hander, but you know it happens to be like say a pole arm or a sword, you're not going to get the crit bonus. Well, take out weapon master and put this in. Uh, make up for the deficiency in the less damage per attack by getting more attacks out there and no downtime. So um, that's the gist of the build. Um, and generally speaking, with a lot of these skills, like I said, all of these guys are utility. Um, what I mean by that is like bulldozer barb um, rarely would I even use the primary attack so that's usually a wasted skill but I needed it because you can't really walk around with charge and auto attack things both of these skills when you're out of fury this is an auto attack when you're out of cooldown this is an auto attack um, so that freed me up from having to use a primary skill so what that means is I don't have to put frenzy or bash or you know um, cleave in here because I don't need it I'm not gonna use it to kill anything I could just auto attack one target if it's a multiple amount of targets I'll use seismic slam so that opened me up to one more skill here that is huge for survival this is why this build works if you put like say bash frenzy or whatever and a seismic slam here you will put yourself in danger having to generate from this although this is a very good generator and you could spam freely these guys if you have a primary attack that generates problem is, is that you're gonna put yourself in danger and then once you get the fear you're gonna have to go back out of range to re-kite so doesn't work out well that way. Um, with this particular setup here, you will have Dread Spear um, be your secondary attack. And once again, this pulls goblins, this heals you, um, this drags mobs out of molten and everything like that. So that's the utility that this brings. And that's when you should use it. Not as a regular attack, but that's when you should use it. Of course, when you're out of fury, depending on which is the least useful at the moment, you use the skill. So if you're fighting something that is not going to kite, um, you're fighting like say the hellhounds and they have no CC at all um, and they basically have like say knockback and things like that well once they knock you back use it you know generate 15 fury use it as your fury um, generator and save these guys here for when they fully surround you ground stomp and leap out if you have to and then war cry of course is um, the best way to get multiple slams you get two slams for every cast so save that for when you really need it um, and that's the way that you play this build. So if you play with a lot of CC mobs, you know, don't spam ground stomp. But if they are white mobs, you can spam the heck out of this and basically, you know, stun a whole group of targets, pull them together, make it easier for your slam, make it more efficient. Um, so that's how you would use these skills. Um, you have to figure at the moment that you need Fury, which is the least useful of the lot, the least useful utility wise. Um, Leap is always useful, so very rarely would I use this to generate fury. Very rare cases, like if I'm finding a single mob, there's not an elite in sight, of course you could do that to gain a little bit of fury before the next fight. Now the other thing that I would um, share with you guys too, the video didn't really show is, I learned this after I made my introduction video. Seismic Slam and Ancient Spear, if you have a single mob left, you do not want to use this to kill a single mob if you feel that you know time is not of the essence. Um, although I spam it like crazy still, doesn't really matter. I am comfortable to the point where, you know, Fury Starvation doesn't worry me. Um, but if you like to have Seismic Slam be most efficient every single time, cast Ancient Spear when it's down to a one-on-one -on -one situation and continually right-click for the auto attack. That saves you from having to spend your Fury attacking a single unit at the same time charging it slowly as you go. So when you enter the next fight, you're going to have a pull here in reserve, not having to burn a utility to go ahead and start slamming things. So um, that's my other tip for you guys, and that will help with your Fury struggles if you guys are starting out on this build. And um, yeah, with skills, that's about as much as I can say with this. Um, if you guys have any suggestions for alternates, once again, I don't suggest any spenders with this at all. Right now, I'm critting to the point where I could one-shot mobs even in towers um, after Cydea, um, you know, in the Heart of Sin and things like that. Um, so having all your fury go towards seismic slam just kills that much faster. If you go one-shot white mobs, uh, maybe two-shot them if you miss your crit. Um, you don't want to spend it on sprint. You don't want to spend it on Ren. And Ren is another one that gets thrown out there. Like, why don't you use Ren to heal with all that DPS? I tried it. Ren is underwhelming. I get full heal from one shot of this every 10 seconds. Ideally, to be efficient, you want to cast Ren every 5 seconds. And you need the mob to stay alive for you to benefit. But what benefit is the mob staying alive for you if you can kill them in one hit? So, with Life Steal. I not only heal from killing them, I heal more by killing more. So Ren, 
Um, not a good choice here because once again, Ren's distance is atrocious. You have to be in point blank range to use it. Um, some people might have tanky enough barbs even with a two hand to do it. Um, you could couple it with ignore pain. Ren is a good renovation from what it was. It's still not, I think, build worthy to, to build a build around it. Um, for people that are using it right now, they probably just don't know a better alternatives. Um, but in my opinion, if you guys are out there and you're using Ren right now, give this a shot if your DPS is through the roof. You'd be surprised at how much you heal with a single shot. And the utility of pulling goblins is amazing. And because of that, I don't need sprint in here anymore. So that freed me up another spot for survival. And with a two-hand barb, you can never get too much of that. Um, so, you know, with sprint, sprint's nice, but... That is even more power hungry than this guy. Every three seconds you get to recast it and sometimes you spam it because you don't want it to end prematurely. Um, when you have sprint in the build, there's, there's no way without a um, regular main attack that you're going to generate enough fury for both. So if you guys are out there thinking about doing it, save your time. You know, it's not worth it. Sprint is way more fury hungry than seismic slam itself. Um, I'm going to make more gameplay videos too to of course showcase with my new gear um, how everything synergizes and um, generally speaking like I said skill wise if you guys like to talk about variants please bring up the conversation because I direly miss it since everybody's warning a whirlwind barb and as good as that build is and I, th I think um, it is way faster you know if you want to grind um, paragon levels but um, my kill speed for elites now, um, the, the gear that I have is still not optimal, but the gear that I have, not best in slot, I can kill most mobs between 5 to 10 seconds. Um, and if they're a little bit harder of a mob for other builds, like Occultus, I could still kill them within about 5 to 10 seconds. In fact, range mobs are 10 times easier to fight than a lot of hard-hitting melee mobs, so it's kind of switched around the roles. Um, Demonic Tremors are actually a little trickier because of their shielding, and because of the uh, massive amount of recast because you're hitting them while they're shielded. Um, so that's the harder mobs, Phase Beasts are the harder mobs, but those annoying Occultus mobs get face-rolled with this. Um, so generally speaking, you know, be on a lookout for more of those videos. I'm going to probably do a full run through and um, provide more fights like the bulldozer build and fully support this as I go and find, you know, new things about it to improve it. So I'll see you guys in the next video, which should be gearing oriented. Any questions, feel free to leave a comment here or the related thread in Reddit, and I'll try to leave a link in the description. Thank you very much, and I'll see you then. All right, bye-bye.